Welcome back to Rusted Junk, the 80s movies podcast. Do you find yourself wanting to put on a corked hat, fight crocodiles in the outback and then move to New York? How about befriending an alien by dressing him up as a ghost on Halloween? If so, this is the podcast for you. If you remember searching for that perfect film from Blockbuster, and if you grew up in the UK, waiting for that one VHS copy to be turned to the newsagents, then welcome. We'll have fond memories waiting for you. I'm Charlie, and the rest of the Rusted Junk team are Amanda, Hello. Joe, are. and Dom. Hello! Welcome to the season finale. Here we are. We finally reached it. We are we are here with the um, my my film. So this is uh, my final choice. Um, and it is the 1986 film Crocodile Dundee, starring Paul Hogan, Linda Kozlowski, Mark Bloom. That's it. That's that's all I've got. And so that's why I think Roll Call is going to be a little light. So a little brief, should we say, this time. But yes, yeah, so Crocodile Dundee, usually I pass it over to somebody else, but because it's my film, why did I pick it? Well, it, it, it's my, if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling if I'm feeling down, or if I want something like in the background admin, or I want something to like lift me up, even subconsciously because I'm working, I'll stick on Crocodile Dundee because it's just there. I know what's coming. I know what what it is. It it knows what film it is. It's it is what it is, and I do think that it has one of my favourite. Might not be the best. I mean, I don't know if it where it appears in the charts, but it has my favourite ending of of any eighties film. For my money, but because I genuinely like that, but we we will get to that. Um, it's not as good as Dirty Dancing ending. Well, well, I mean, it depends whether you like the Dirty Dancing ending. I mean, you know, I know you, I know you're a, a huge fan with your ten out of ten. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, is it an iconic ending? Not no nowhere near as no. as, 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 as Dirty Dancing. <laughs> Spoiler alert! No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Carry on with the point. <laughs> but it's yeah. got a great. It's got a. It's got a good end. It's well, I think it's I mean, great ending. You're talking about the very last scene. Yes, like where it fades and all that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you Jesus! Mean? Oh, this is oh, going to be harsh then. No, when it fades, as in when it finishes. Yeah, you know, it, it finishes. Stops. It, yeah, it's it freezes the frame and then it just fades yeah. to black. That's what oh, you're that... talking about, right? No, no. Right, oh, see, okay. now I was I thought about because I thought that was very well done how they did that last second of the movie or a couple of seconds anyway. Are you taking the piss, Joe? No, I'm not taking the piss. <laughs> I mean, I'm being, being funny. legitimately. I I think that's a really cool scene. <laughs> did I, I? I was surprised that they what, ended it they that free, way. Freeze framed it and yes. it went to black. That's oh, very intimate. You know? I mean, yeah. I mean, granted, they they did that in Rocky too, also. But I just liked the execution in this film. No, mine goes from he's gone walkabout, and then she goes to find him on the subway. From that point, anyway, everybody, right? Okay. Everybody, everybody applauds. That's the that's the finale, isn't it? But that's almost become such a cliche. That it's like a meme, isn't it? Uh, and everyone stood up and clapped. You know, that's like, yeah, that's like the lamest <laughs> ending I can imagine. I, I mean, I'm oh. not surprised Joe got confused. What, what, what do you like about that bit? Whether all sorry, listeners, as we start with the end of the film. But, um, <laughs> well, I'll agree. Applauds them as they have a snog. Yeah. I yeah. No one would. I think people would beat the crap out of him for standing on anybody's head or shoulder. That would not have jived at all in that subway station. And I've seen it that packed. They they would have killed him. I'm pretty sure. A bunch of cynics. Look at, oh, look at you. Right, come on. You've shattered his romantic pop my, ending. Pop my balloon. He lost his confidence now. This well, is the right, pot off to a shaky start, right? Well, come on, Charlie. Well, but right, the freeze, goes, the freeze and the you, fades, 10 out of 10. Which one of you three? Oh, God, which one should I go for? Right. Do you know what? I, I might get a bit of positive, so I'm going to go, Amanda, you're, uh, you're up. Okay, so I have actually seen this film before. Yes. Hey, blimey. <laughs> a few times. Um, yeah, it's all right. It's a bit kind of dated with sort of what happens in there and sort of the kind of macho, you know, outback guy and <sighs> sort of 
frail kind of, well, not frail, but weak, feeble kind of woman who tries to kind of say, well, no, I don't need you. But clearly she does, because otherwise she'd get eaten by a crocodile. Um, yeah, it was all right. It's a typical macho man kind of sweep the woman off her feet movie, isn't it? You don't think although, that she, she could have her own? she's a bit of a tart, isn't she? A little bit, yeah. Mm. Yeah. But don't you think she like was strong? Slug. Yeah, yeah. Did what? Don't no, you think she was... Oh, come on. No, no, he said that's slut tart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> For our overseas and everywhere Hello. else, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> she was quite She was quite strong. She was pretty, pretty... I don't need this. Well, I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bit... Uh... And she ran down the street in her bare feet. Yeah. Well, I, I all I was thinking is, how could she have left her shoes there? Were they Christian Louboutin shoes? <laughs> her father you was rich. The street, would you? But, oh, she's rich. Do you, you not see where? Take them off, but you'd hold them. You'd run with them in your hands. You wouldn't leave them there. But you'd look stupid. What? Running with shoes. Yeah. <laughs> would make for opposed to without shoes. Well, I'm being she, a little she needed to be quicker. She's not Bryce Dallas Howard in Jurassic World. Well, I understand World. she's taking the shoes off. That's a logical thing to do when you're wearing, you know, killer heels. But yeah. don't leave them in the street. Pick them up. Take them with you. I'm almost... It's funny. All right, I got to tell this story really quick. I, I knew this girl. She went on an interview. Oh. She fell asleep on the subway. And when she oh, woke no. up, some homeless person was wearing her shoes. Oh, no. <laughs> Why would you fall asleep on the subway? I mean, because she was tired and she had to oh. go to the interview, you know. So uh, she had no shoes for the interview. She didn't retrieve the shoes from the hobo. No, no she was afraid. She didn't get the job. Uh, I don't know. I forget that story. Oh, I just remember. Can't tell, can't I just remember the, the job or not. I just think it was funny. She woke up and some homeless person was wearing her shoes. I thought that was pretty funny. Well, sound like she got what she deserved. Sorry. <laughs> that was harsh. V victim blaming as always, Charles. Victim blaming. Well, Dom, Dom, over to you then. So I was really looking forward to watching this film again and to reviewing it because it was a big, successful film when it was launched on a very modest budget, wasn't it? So it's was not just a commercial success, but kind of a cultural hit as well. It was a very famous film. Um, I remember it was one of my dad's favourite films of the 80s, so I was kind of intrigued to see it again it, i have seen it a couple of times since but not for a long time so yeah I, I enjoyed watching it i do agree there's some element of it being formulaic to amanda's point but um particularly the first half a bit set in australia actually i enjoyed the most i think before it switched to new york but uh, enjoyable film great choice i'm sure we'll have a good discussion mm. all right okay finally come on mr cynical let's bring it down a bit well i hadn't seen this movie in the 21st century so it's been a while since I've seen it. Okay. And I didn't think I was going to enjoy it, but I actually did. I thought it was wow. pretty good. And, and it brought back fond memories that how Dom had said how culturally impactful this movie was. Most people didn't even know where Australia was or the difference between Australians and the English. And over here, anyway. But once this became such a huge hit, it got annoying, like where everyone was saying, good day, mate, and that's not a knife and all that. And uh, But it really struck a nerve in a lot of Americans' hearts. They loved it. It was a great movie. I mean, it, it's kind of like, if you look at it, it, it's your typical fish out of water kind of thing. He's a little bit like Indiana Jones, which I think they kind of, you know, just like his look and his ruggedness and all that. But it's it's good. He's fantastic, and yeah. I I think I don't. He should have been nominated for an Oscar for it, and also I think that he should have been knighted. I don't know if Australia does that because look, he must have brought billions, if not trillions, of dollars to that country. Yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. from that movie. So yeah, I'll just say I, I do like it. I, I thought it was a good movie so popular that it was joe that we had a sequel in 1988 which i could say is probably as good um obviously flips it around for those who haven't seen the sequel they start in new york um they're under threat 
uh they've got a, like a local crime family that's after them um and they move to australia in the second half where they find it's on home turf and they fight them on on his turf uh i i, I genuinely think that's good uh unfortunately i've only seen crocodile dundee in los angeles aka crocodile dundee 3 uh once and that was enough uh by that time the balloon had well and truly uh popped um but did anyone else do the homework that i set you to see the 2020 film the very excellent mr dundee no. Mate, I barely, I barely got this one watched in time. So, okay. um, All right. you know, sadly. Joe, I'm looking at you. Is that the one you, that you then? had on on the telly the other day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it looked alright. He looked well old. He looked like a really old leather Wait, wallet. He's 80. I um, made an effort. I did watched you watch half a little bit? Okay. I watched half of it. Okay. Did you get the... Um, did, you, did you get the... Did you get the, the so the plot is, he's going to be knighted by the Queen. Um, And that's the idea. And he's like... Yeah, he's not too fussed about being knighted. But then his, and this is the, the this is the genuinely lovely bit in the film. His granddaughter, uh, is his, no, his granddaughter? Yeah. Granddaughter is basically having trouble at school. And she's like confiding in him over Zoom and stuff and like talking to him. And he refuses it and says, tell his agent, I'm not bothered. I don't want to do it. don't want to do it. And then the girl rings up, oh, I heard you're going to be knighted. So he's he's back on it. But every mistake he makes, he gets invited. Olivia Newton John invites him. The Olivia Newton John. She was hot. Yeah, yeah, she was. Um, invited into a um, uh, uh, a recreation of Greece with Olivia Newton John and John Travolta in like a village hall. Uh, but he gets dropped off at the, and it's for um, uh, disadvantaged kids. But he gets dropped off at, and he doesn't realise that he's dropped off at the Black Movie Awards. Uh, the Black Music Awards. He's interviewed on the red carpet. He says, it's very good. It's a bit weird to see you here. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I always do things for disadvantaged people. And, you know, they've had it hard and they've had it tough and all this sort of thing. Uh, well, I've heard a couple of them are uh, even going to uh, get up and do a performance <laughs> at the end of the night. They're going to try try and sing. And I'm like, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Dundee, it's over that way. Uh, <laughs> and he's to realise in the wrong place. You got John Cleese as an Uber driver and Chevy Chase as a mentor. It's bananas. I haven't uh, seen Chevy Chase yet. But yeah, okay. It's bananas and it genuinely has some some good laughs in it. But you if you was if you were just nonchalant about the whole thing, you go cash grab. Uh which is essentially what it is. But anyway. Mm. So we do have sequ- we did have sequels. Uh the the rumor was they're trying to reboot Crocodile Dundee. With Chris, oh God! Why? With, with Can Chris Hemsworth. With any original ideas these wait days? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I haven't told you the bit where you're going to go. Mm. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Oh, it's go got on. Chris Hemsworth in it. It's got Thor in it. Well, you know, <laughs> look, at, look at that! Might switch. be might be quite a good idea. <laughs> oh blimey! Oh my God! He was on the um the boss ad. The aftershave had the uh, last night. I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> it's a jollies where, where you can. Eh? I'm a telly. I'm I did want to say really quick about the. Uh, what was it? What was the name of that movie? The, the, the very excellent Mr. Dundee. The very excellent Mr. Dundee. It was kind of like Curb Your Enthusiasm. It was, yeah. Where yeah, he yeah. was like Larry and he was surrounded by jerks and idiots. Yeah. Like nobody <laughs> liked him other than his granddaughter. Yeah. And um, the acting was just horrendous in that. Other than yeah. him, he was okay. He's very subdued. Yes, because he's he very old. Seem like a, well, yeah, he didn't seem like himself, which is kind of sad too. It's like you kind of like want him to be like kind of have an edge, like in the Crocodile Dundee movies. Instead, he's super nice and super sweet. Yeah, and uh, just he has a smile like my dad. My dad's eighty-five, and he has that kind of like smile where it's not a smile, but it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I kind of recognised that. So I guess I probably liked it a little bit more. Um, but I didn't even know it exists until a Christmas party last year, and I got told, uh, "What?" So yeah, um, there you go. Hopefully, we've imparted to the uh, to the rest of our listeners. Shall we watch the trailer? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. Roll credits. Roll trailer. What's the thing? I don't know. Roll credits. Roll it.
He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. Two beers, all right? One for me, one for me, mate. A legendary figure about to encounter a world more treacherous than any he has ever known. G'day. Big Dundee from Australia. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Just came down for a couple of days. Probably see you around. Bye. This is your first trip to New York? First trip anywhere. Well, we might just have to give you one for free. <laughs> yeah. One what? How are you finding New York? I need a balloon to take us along. That's why I love it, because I fit right in. G'day. Hello. Sorry. G'day. Look. Oh. Oh. Well, if you can manage, Walt, I'd like to stay a while. Wouldn't have anything to do with a certain lady writer, would it? Paramount Pictures presents... Your pal, Senor Meek. Paul Hogan. Um, hey, my man, what's happening? Uh, where? As Crocodile Dundee. You got a light, buddy? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And your wallet. You got a knife. <laughs> That's not a knife. That's a knife. Crocodile Dundee. So what do we think of the trailer then? It's a classic 80s trailer, but what do we think? The whole film. It's the best bits of the film in the trailer. Well, for those listening, it doesn't give... Well, if you haven't watched it by now, then where have you been? But, you know... <laughs> If you haven't watched it, then yeah, it gives away the best line in the film, arguably, um, and the uh, the only jump scare that's in the. But yeah, it's a it's a good old eighties trailer. Would we? Yeah, do we agree? Yeah. Would you go and see it if you based on that? Oh yeah, no, I did. Yeah. No, kinda probably had... not. It seemed like he had Rambo's knife. <laughs> He said he saw himself as a mix between Chuck Norris and Rambo. Oh, really? Who's Chuck yes. Norris? Oh, oh boy. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, I think you've opened up a can of worms with the... Well, I don't know who... I'm going to stay Chuck? silent on this one. I'm just going to... I'm just going to referee. Who is it? He's just like a tough guy. Uh, does he do karate? He does everything, uh, Joe. What yeah. film? We'll say martial arts. While he's in Way of the Dragon, where he fights Bruce Lee, that's my favorite role in him. But I know he didn't he do Prisoner of War, Delta Force. Yeah, yeah. he's done a lot of '80s action movies. Walker, yeah. Texas Walker, Texas Ranger. No. Oh wow. Okay. He's he's hard, basically. He's right tough. hard. Why do I not know him? <laughs> I don't know. Crikey! It was he turned up. He had that cameo in The Expendables too. Where the tank just gets blown up and then it's out the mist comes Chuck Norris and you're like, oh. oh, now this film's now this film's cooking, now it's going. Are you not familiar with the, all the kind of one-liners about him, Amanda? So there's that um, they tried to put Chuck Norris's face on Mount Rushmore, but the granite wasn't tough enough for him. When <laughs> Chuck Norris does push-ups, he doesn't push himself up; he pushes the earth down. That, that's something. <laughs> yeah. Chuck, Chuck Norris has a polar bear carpet at home. It's not dead. He's just afraid to move. Etc. Um, Etc. Et so. Well, I like those. They're quite fun. Oh, maybe I should watch him then. I gotta send you a YouTube video of him where he's sniping like all of these people that fell. It's kind of like mixed together. Have you guys ever seen that? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, it's hysterical. Oh, yes. there's so many of them. WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, one of the things that happened as a result of Crocodile Dundee, um, and it's these are for the UK lot, is that suddenly we get 
adverts for Foster's um, and that he's in and adverts for um, Crassamine Forex, which cheers. Yeah, thanks for importing that dross. I mean, you might as well drink your own, <laughs> drink your own pee. It was awful. Fizzy pee. But he did, the adverts were genuinely funny, wasn't it? Weren't they? If you can cast your mind back. Dom, you were very young, but yeah. No, no, I remember. What was the, what was was the strap one, line? There was one at the ballet, wasn't there, which was, ah, um, oh, what was it? A man in his strides? You go off, Charlie. You, you, you help me oh, out. Oh, no, I should have. Well, this is where I should have researched it a bit more, but yeah. And there was one that was a play on words with um, Fosters and Cock Fosters, the, uh, the London yeah. uh, borough, wasn't there? Australians couldn't give a cast. Well, that was Castlemaine Forex about anything else, but that wasn't his. What was Foster's tagline? Oh, I think I gosh. remember it. I think it was. Oh, we did loads. Is, is Australian for beer, mate. <laughs> oh, that was. <laughs> okay. I always remember that it was the Castlemaine advert where they, they 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 put crates and crates of beer on this poor truck and it's and it's and it's on its knees and they put two bottles of sherry on the top of them. Oh, and it yeah. creaks and it creaks and it falls down. I think we've overdone it on the sherry there, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. But that was a huge thing too. I mean, it brought Foster's over here and oh, everybody like... wanted to have it. And like they're like, why is it that can so much bigger? You know, it's everybody wanted to have it. And it's uh Crocodile Dundee kind of introduced it to this country. Such a... To be fair, Foster's must have been like introducing like <laughs> you know, the, the nectar of the gods compared to what you had. He must have worshipped it. He oh, raised well, the we... of Miller Light and Coors and Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Oh, snobbery. Uh, <laughs> I still prefer, I don't want to say Budweiser, but like our American beers, you know. Mm, Sorry. Uh, craft beers, yeah. <clears throat> Suddenly you exploded. The craft beer is, is, is amazing, but I do remember, Dom, when we were going over, there wasn't, there wasn't much of a choice, was there? We could drink twenty pints. You could, you could drink twenty pints and still be standing at the end of the night. You could, you just <laughs> yeah, even like where's the alcohol? Going to the yeah. Really? Yeah. Never been drinking, so hydrated. Mm-hmm. Drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon. Well, what's uh, uh, what would you say England's most popular beer is? Uh, well, yeah, we, we've got some poor ones as well. Um, I suppose it might be Carling, perhaps, which would be our equivalent of Foster's and Budweiser. Yeah, it, we don't yeah. cover ourselves with glory on that one, no. But Stella, that's Stella. Yeah, the European yeah. lager is the best. A nice cold pint of Moretti um, at ten o'clock oh, in the check morning. Check you out, Mister Middleclass. Have spot. a beer Moretti, please. <laughs> yeah, ten yeah. o'clock in the ten o'clock in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> wash those wash those cold flakes down and um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, I've um, been uh, I've, I've been drinking Landlord recently, Joe. If you ever make it over to the oh, UK, yeah, Timothy Taylor's Landlord in a pub in oh, Haworth. Yeah. Good company, log fire, pints of that. I had three pints of it at the Woodland Tavern on on Friday night, and it was yeah. um, it was incredible. Yeah, can you drink it the south? Landlord. As I say, south of Watford, but you're not south of Watford, are no, you? No, we're not. Thank you. Okay, borderline southerners, but uh, not quite. So yeah, fair enough. So yeah, okay. so Timothy Taylor's landlord. Foster's was a the, deal. the amber nectar, by the way. Oh, the amber nectar. Amber nectar. It yeah, was the, one out of two. Ain't bad. They didn't even try and disassociate themselves from piss, did they? Uh, they, they actually <laughs> went for it in the, uh, in the marketing slogan. Yeah. And apparently, really it's uh, it tasted like an angel crying on your tongue. I think an angel yes. was doing. She, she wasn't crying. She was. No, uh, it was a little bit he. wet. Away from the he angel, wasn't crying. Maybe. Yeah. Definitely milky. Anyway, <laughs> um, right? Should we should we go on to roll call on that note? Yeah, this will be the sh- this will be the shortest roll call in history. If this lasts more than, I, 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 I'm going to go six minutes. But I, I'm, I'm yeah, only because I need your help on on one of the things, Joe. Here's what? roll call. The, 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 oh. Roll call. Right, Paul Hogan. <laughs> Not a lot. Pa- 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 and D. Pause, One, two, yeah, pa- three. pause there, right? Because um, there's, yeah. there's a theme. There is a reason it's going to be a short roll call because he didn't do much and uh, Linda Kozlowski didn't Kozlowski, do much either. Yeah. Kozlowski. No. But why not? Because they're both good. At, I think, you know, I don't know if it's a consensus, but they're both strong presence in this film. The two leads are I great. Agree. The, chemi- the yeah. chemistry between them is just exceptional. And, uh, they get married? Back- in real life, yeah. So one, yeah. one of um, 
I think the chemistry between in this film is really great. And then you discover they got married in real life and were married for like 14 years. And uh, and obviously an on-screen, off-screen romance that led to that. Uh, but yeah, but it's baffling to me that neither of them had a good career afterwards because they drive the whole film. The rest of it, you know, without getting into my full review, is, is a fairly generic fish-out-of-water comedy. But, but those two bring a real presence to it, I think. And I'm just really surprised that neither of them did anything really. Yeah. Afterwards. Yeah. yeah, she's pretty hot as well, isn't she? Uh, yes, she definitely certainly is. That's usually where well, Joe pipes up and goes, "Yeah, smoke, smoke is hot. okay." Okay, what? she's okay. I don't know. There's something about her. It just wasn't crazy. That, about. that leg when she's your tell, Signora Nick. Oh, I'm like, yes, I'm, 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 I'm I in this film. I was thinking of the there. leg. I was thinking Maybe. of the thong swimsuit. Okay, when she does that ill-advised. Uh, Bathing by the crocodile infested. How stupid <laughs> is that? Seriously. She was filling the water tank up. What from that river? Exactly. What? what? Do you want like you know typhoid and diphtheria or whatever you get from untreated water? And also ticks. Don't they have ticks in Australia? Also, assuming they would. They have everything in Australia. It's all poisonous. <laughs> it, they all bite you. They have ticks I, and, and crosses. I was I was kind of surprised that. There wasn't a sequel immediately after Crocodile Dundee 2. Because, like Charlie said, that was a pretty good movie, pretty good sequel. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I feel like Paramount dropped the ball because they had a franchise on their hands. And then they were like, two's enough. You know, and then when did three come out? In, uh, 2001. Was there was a huge gap, 13 year gap. Yeah. And it's just oh, like, God. I think that they should have just hit while the iron was hot. Hmm. And, it's, you know, it's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, uh, absolutely. However, now we're back to, to, to Raw Call. He did do a film, again, with Linda Kozlowski, where he... Oh, I think I know whole... it is. Well, what is it, Joe? Almost an Angel? No, I was going to... Yes, well, there is that one. <laughs> but Lightly <laughs> Jack, where he plays a cowboy. Oh, we did two, then. Two more. Yeah. Oh, three more, if you include Flipper. He, made, he was in That's the remake right, of Flipper. Flipper. Yeah. Um... That that's pretty much it. That's he had the he had the Paul Hogan show, yeah. and it's it's kind of weird because see now we got from us like from you guys we basically watched a lot of Monty Python, and uh, we found that funny. I mean, I found it funny when I couldn't understand it. I had difficulty understanding the the jargon or the the you know the accent. Um, but then they brought us uh, the Paul Hogan show. To kind of say well you know if people like monty python oh no benny hill was next and you know we had benny hill for a while and then right after benny hill they brought in ben hogan and ben hogan i watched a few episodes and it just wasn't there it wasn't he thought he was funny but i don't think anyone else thought he was funny well i remember my dad watching it because obviously channel four get got it and um you know, he, he would watch somebody and he'd howl with laughter because he, he loved this film. Um, it's a bit like what you were saying, Dom, it's, it was just a dad film, really. Um, but yeah, but that's it for Paul Hogan, unfortunately. There's nothing yeah. more. <clears throat> There's, it's a real shame that he didn't do anything anything else. And uh, obviously tragically killed by being got by that stingray, wasn't he? Um, which, uh, you know, brought a tear <laughs> to all our hearts. Uh, rest in peace, Paul Hogan. Very good. Is this the confusion, confusion bit, Dom? Again, is it? What, what do you mean? <laughs> is it? Is it not Steve Irwin? No. Is, it... is that like a like a future Mandela effect sort of thing? <laughs> you tell me that does... two. <laughs> you tell me they're two different people, are you? <laughs> Steve Irwin against Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. Well, hate to break this to you, but um. I can't go on to Linda Koslowski. She didn't do anything else. That's it. I just met all the films that I've just mentioned. She was in. I don't think she was in Flipper. That's it. But she was in all the others. Um, two more. <laughs> I mean, how how Wally, his best mate Wally, wasn't in a series of like spin-offs or something like that. As you said, Joe, they could have milked this. You could have had Donk. Donk with the pint on his head, trying to you know, trying to do that. Even though, by the way, that wasn't much of a challenge. He was allowed to hold the pint. Yeah, I saw well, that then, too. I, I could do that. 
Well, I guess he's getting punched in the stomach at the same time, though. But but I agree. The pint. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a cop out. Why Donk was in in other stuff, and you're oh, it's Donk from Crocodile Dundee. Oh, it's that guy with the missing tooth and all that sort of stuff. They all just disappeared. Um, do, you remember the, do you remember the Bushwhackers? No. I don't know if you guys watched wrestling. They were a tag. Oh, team. The, the the guys that came in yeah. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they That's were based on Donk. <laughs> well, some something had to carry the legacy. Uh, the next one I'm going to go to is Mark Bloom, who played her fiance. Uh, the Ponce. The Ponce. Perfume punts. Um He had a good three. He had a good eighty-five with Desperately Seeking Susan, Crocodile Dundee in eighty-seven, and Blind Date. Forget what you say. I genuinely love it. It's one of my like guilty pleasures. Blind Date with Bruce Willis and Kim Basinger in eighty-seven. Then obviously he was best mates with Mark Harmon because he did the Presidio with Mark Harmon and Sean Connery in eighty-eight, and Worth Winning with Mark Harmon in eighty-nine. And disappeared not disappeared you can go to his imdb but every time i trawl through it for roll call you just sometimes you just go stuff 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 until something gets oh oh i didn't realize he did the voice for nightwing in the batman set or something like that nothing and and he genuinely plays a good slimy guy i think he's he's not bad yeah he's annoying and that's what he was paid to play so i guess he did a good yeah. job yeah absolutely uh and then to keep it within the seven minutes which are probably are very close did anyone want to tell me the die hard connection R- yeah, reginald, Fel- jo- oh, reginald Fel- johnson yeah yeah that, the, so, uh, the the donut eating cliched cop in die hard one and two right. uh, also have you turn on each yeah yeah um have we have we booked our when when do we think it's christmas day i know we'll be doing christmas films but when is when is it time to watch die hard is that first of december is, should you should it be the as close to the start of december as when is the right time muppets christmas carol christmas vacation national yeah. christmas vacation yeah. well scrooge for me and it's good that we're actually doing doing that so, because I would watch it anyway. Um, yeah, die. Yeah. See, I'm thinking it's the first. Does anyone else play Whamageddon? Or is it just me and Amanda? And, and Amy. Oh, well, Joe, you played it last year, didn't you? Oh, yeah. yeah I'm afraid yeah. to turn on the TV now. <laughs> <laughs> Dom? What's Whamageddon? What's, what's Whamageddon? What? Right, explain it. Amanda, explain it to him. Okay. Wham's Last Christmas. Great song. Yeah. Yep. If you Ooh, hear great. it on the radio or in a shop store, you're yep. out. You're out. <laughs> out of what? You, you... From the 1st of December, you've got to try and make it to Christmas Day without hearing it. That's impossible. You can't make it to lunchtime, can you, from oh. about mid-November? So I think I got I... to like the 19th or something. And then I yeah, was yeah you did we really were... well. We were in um, Derby in the shopping centre last year. Do you remember? We had to go and do the freebie yeah. ticket thing. I wasn't particularly well, but um, we went anyway. And um, they really played it in the shopping centre. And I was like, ah, oh, can't well, get away now. Third of, Dece- third of December, I was in a Birmingham pub. I came in 11 o'clock. I went, do you know what? I've made it. I've made it out. And I was just about to catch the train. And just as I was going, it kicked in. I was like, balls i didn't even make it to double figures is, is there anything better than being in a pub at christmas and having all the old classics on bit of that bit of wizard bit of do the yeah. notes christmas time the unedited pogues and kirsty mccall oh, I, I love it it's getting me in the mood for going to the pub and having a pint now and uh and it's still only just <laughs> early november <laughs> well it's halloween's over so it's, it's christmas time now isn't it really Ugh, there's no. nothing you've got thanksgiving joe i mean yeah you know, the r- ritual watching the planes trains and automobiles I well, last year you. when we were playing Wham again, and it's they barely play that over here. Um, but I, I turned on the radio or, or something I was listening to, and I heard it, but it was a country music version of it. It doesn't count. It's got to be the original. And I was like, "Oh, I'm safe." But it was like, "Last Christmas, I gave you my heart." <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god god bless the us um for their, for their bastardization of our greatest hits anyway um right cool that's it that's roll call unless anyone's got any anything obscure that they right what about any of the aboriginal uh actors in there nothing <laughs> Well, controversially, that act is pretty much in every film that features an Aborigine. They just wheel him out, really, don't they? So, yes. He, he's um, also in um, Walkabout, which is the best Australian film, I think. So, so is Wally. What's Wally? The, the guy, his best mate, Wally. He's in Walkabout oh, yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, but what a film that is. I mean, um, never seen it. You've never seen Walkabout? Why? Should I have seen it? It's like a rites of passage film for any... British male teenagers to watch. You know what it's famous for, don't, apart from the fact that it is a really, really good film. I, I don't know anything about it. All <laughs> right, okay. Well, my friend Jenny Agatha's in the buff through <laughs> large sections of it. Yeah. How did I miss that? What? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what? I don't know. Yeah. Wait, well, what year is it? Well, without wanting to sound at all dodgy, because she's le- over the legal age, but she's pretty young. Yeah. As in, you know. Uh, an older no, teenager. I mean, when I was think. the film made? Not how old. Yeah, but that's she? why you. That's why you were asking. What, no, what I was asking was for how 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 long I missed it for in the eighties. Let me Google whilst uh, whilst okay. I also contemplate that film and <laughs> fill in oh, for you, me, everyone. You <laughs> dirty just, old man. I'm just googling Jenny Agatha in Walkabout. I might be a few minutes before we start. I've got to say that. Does anyone know what the what the budget for this film was and what it made? Oh, budget. Ooh. Everyone have a guess. Are they actually in Australia when they filmed it? Yes. Uh, so it's going to be a split centre location. Uh... <laughs> Look at you putting it in a calculator. Uh, two locations, uh, seven, seven uh... actors. <laughs> I'm thinking of that too. Ching, ching. Uh... I don't think they got paid very much. Well. Mm. So you don't have to worry about their salaries. Uh... <laughs> Well, I'll in order to st- the dead air, th- it was honestly. twenty million. <laughs> I I right. would say fifteen. Well, Joe, you are closer. It was ten million Australian dollars. Oh God, that's four dollars for the pound, aren't yeah. they? How much did it make oh. worldwide? Well, it was quite big, wasn't it? Was it about three hundred million? I'll say two hundred. Three hundred and fifty-three million. Oh, Back Joe, in 80- have you been swatting up? Back in eighty six back in eighty six as well. Three hundred and fifty three million. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, yeah. When we go back to you said it wasn't cult- culturally, I mean it maybe not I- 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 iconic, but culturally, God, everyone loved it. The little bit that I did love from trivia, and I'm gonna introduce it now. In excess, the band in excess invested in this move just to reduce their tax tax um uh, the amount of tax that they paid so they just used it as a little tax dodge to to invest in the movie they invested in the movie and made millions back oh my god based that's on the amazing. investment so yeah so every time you're watching michael hutchins sing, singing need you tonight it's like a millionaire <laughs> like this is a, incredible anyway nice. more trivia later oh in fact go on i've got one more piece of trivia and then as soon as we're playing guessing games so this without googling Amanda, don't be googling. This is the second highest grossing film of 1986. I want number one, and I want number three. Do I know them? Oh, absolutely. I know no, number one. No, no, some some obscure little uh, art house indie film was was the third highest grossing film in America. Ness, you've heard of them? Have I watched them? Uh, definitely one of them. Uh, poss- I think, yeah, possibly. I think everyone's watched the other one. Uh, hang on. Oh, I need to move the book. Oh, it feels like oh. I should get you to write them down on a bit of paper. And then oh, is she cheating? Up. I think she's cheating. Yeah, she's going. She's... No, I'm just going back in, in film. Yeah. Well, why did your camera turn yeah. off? Yeah. Well, for those, oh, for those, no. Um... For those listening, she just cut the feed <laughs> while she Googles it. <laughs> I'm really looking at my own notepad. Um, mm. Yeah, I've got a dodgy collection. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. That old quiz, quiz, quiz night. Uh, quiz well, it's night definitely thing. not going to be legend, <laughs> is it? Because that was 1985. Why are we introducing no, random but, films from other... Amanda, number four was Karate Kid Part 2. Do you remember that? Karate, Karate Kid. Rubbish. 
Karate. I heard somebody, I, I heard a film critic the other day called Lit Karate, and yeah, that was back in wrong. the 80s. And I'm like, well, they're right. They're absolutely right. That film right. And all someone the, from uh, all the tea, tea Ghost? ceremonies. Was Ghost no, number one? Right. I think. Ghost, Ghost was 1990. 1990. Oh. So, yeah. Although, on, on Ghost, and, and hang on, hang on. No, what, but he, uh, Paul Hogan, when we did Roll Call, we forgot to mention he turned down the Patrick Swayze role in Ghost, didn't he? So, really? Oh. Yeah. I, see, I didn't well, get that. All right, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, you think? In a foolish career move. But I can't see that. Oh, um, it wouldn't have worked. It yeah. wouldn't have been as hit, uh, big a hit as it was. <clears throat> it would have been, oh, I don't really want been... to see Paul Hogan dancing. It would have been a bit funnier. Wait a minute, you don't like Ghost. I don't like Ghost. No, you don't. Right, so it doesn't matter if Paul Hogan. I don't like the film. You don't like Ghosts, or you don't like Ghost the film. Be like Patrick Swayze. Right. Oh, she Um, likes Patrick Swayze. She probably she probably uh, took up pottery at night school or something. And after that, I did actually do pottery at night school, but not because of him. Of course, it was. It was not. Don't you wanted some burning marrow fe- feeling you up rather than feeling the pot. <laughs> For God's anyway. sake. <laughs> well, oh, right. my God. That was a, that was a re- revealing exchange, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe. <laughs> right, Joe. Does somebody want to tell me the first one? Joe, you know what well, it is. Well, I'll give you, Amanda was hot with Legend. So there's an actor that's in Legend. <gasps> Top oh, Gun. Com- of course it is. Top uh... Gun broke. Bro- everything but this is where amanda ex- politely excuses herself and goes nope because we could sit here she could have a list of films from 1986 <coughs> in alphabetical order and we wouldn't get there oh um dom i'm gonna look at you <coughs> i have cheated but it's platoon oh it is it's platoon got that have you seen it we've done platoon. we've never done platoon to full metal jacket oh god now we've gone into now we've got into I, I, I don't remember a film we did three ago but oh I'm we did full metal we jacket did. yeah we did okay which one's platoon kind of different films oliver stone charlie sheen tom berringer willem dafoe there's a ton of vietnam movies kevin dillon yeah they're keith, all keith david the same, aren't they um they're all the same well i'm sure kubrick goes oh, well, is that yes, the one where he, sell, right. he says <laughs> I love the smell of napalm in the morning. That's Apocalypse Now, yeah. Oh, not that one then. They're all the same. They're all pretty much... They're all the same. They're, they're all set in the jungle. They all deal with stuff. jungle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I see what you mean, got, yeah. They've all got Bad Moon Rising playing at some point in the background, haven't they? So, <laughs> and, 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 and a um, top piece of interactive content for our listeners uh i'm just getting a warning on my mac here saying low battery your mac will go and go to sleep and i realize i've left a plug downstairs so i'm going to drop out the pod for two minutes in a highly professional move that'll leave everyone wanting more so um <laughs> it's my worst moment since You're i got the, the loo really out. aren't you dom lock stock and, lock, stock and two smoking barrels mixed up uh, two pods ago so i'll be back in a minute everyone excuse me <laughs> yeah let's talk about it yeah oh. Yeah, right. I bet he's really going to go and drop some friends off at the pool, isn't he? <laughs> drop the kids off at the pool. I was here. I was waiting for that. <laughs> right, I will be back in two minutes. <laughs> oh, sometimes I think, do you know what? If you if you do listen to us, our audio, just go and check us out. On, because sometimes it is a, we have moments of a hilarity, such as that one. <laughs> that, uh, keep, them, keep them coming more for more. Um <sighs> Should we get into the film? I mean, I, I, in fact, I, well, I did have another guess. I did have another guessing game, and it's mm-hmm. a really good guessing game. But I oh, really need Dom for okay. it. So oh. I've said about the twenty reboot. The, the idea we'll talk about Rod Ansell when it comes to trivia time because I think that's really important uh, to talk about. Uh, if you don't, do you know anything about him, Amanda? I don't know who he is. Great. Okay, you will love this story. Um, it's a very sad story, but you'll love it. Um, oh, I can't tell you that bit. Done that bit. Done that. But Tom Paul Hogan said he thought it was a all he was making was a nice little comedy movie for Australia. Literally, what he thought he, he was going to do. But I do need I do need. Oh, he's back just in the nick of time. So one more, one more guessing for you, right? One more guessing bit. This is the fifth most watched film on british tv and obviously the record can't be cut you know any of the records that were set back in the 80s when there were only four 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 or five channels 
you can't beat it now because no, nobody sits down and watches at the same time, the same experience, the same everything else. So it's the well, fifth it's most watched film with 21.75 million viewers watched Crocodile Dundee when it was first shown on British TV. Hmm. What four films were above it? E.T.? No. Star Wars? No. Top oh, Gun? No. Terminator? No. And we can play this. I mean, I can carry on, but I will give is you a actually films or is it Christmas specials? Films. No, no, no. All films. Okay. Uh... Think about... Sorry, let me give you a bit of a clue. Think oh, about carry on was... film. Oh, hang on. Basic Instinct? No. No. Why would spotty. Basic Instinct be? <laughs> no, for the oh, dance. suddenly... Oh, we'll get grandma. We'll get, we'll get grandma and granddad down. We'll get a hot toddy for them. Oh, we've got a film all about somebody who stabbed people in the head with an ice pick. Well, all the mainstream blockbusters have already gone, haven't they? So I'm thinking something that they need to draw people You're missing in. the obvious. What happens? James Bond. Thank you. What ha- that, there we go. So there's there's three. Three of the films James are Bond, Bond films. All right. Indi- right Indiana Jones. So, so we play that again, Dom. Uh, D- Joe. Three of the films are James Bond, and I'll tell you what the other one is after we've done the James Bond bit. Oh, wait, so three of them are James Bond. Yes. Uh, Spy Who Loved Me. Yes, absolutely. There's one. Moonraker. No. Oh. Uh... Goldfinger. No. We- just, weirdly, no. Uh, one of them's Roger Moore, One, the other one's Sean Connery. From Russia with Love? Oh, I know. Uh, no, Thunderbolt. No. What? Diamonds are forever? Diamonds are forever. Yeah. That's crazy. Forever, forever. And then the last one is the Roger Moore uh, Scaramanga. Oh, the man with the old golden gun. Oh, no, sorry. I've got the, the reference wrong. It was Live and Let Die. Sorry. <laughs> it's Scaramanga. But the number one film, and I don't get how many millions, but it must be a lot, is the greatest film ever made. Jaws. Millions upon millions of people watched Jaws when it was first shown. Really? It's a wow, number that's one. Surprising. It's I can't imagine watching kids and your grandma watching that either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a PG. It was a PG essentially when it came out. They only, they only, I think sometime in the mid mid eighties and early nineties they changed it to a twelve A. And I'm like, yeah, pretty much. It's pretty. Uh, <laughs> I keep thinking Amy's going to watch it, so. Our daughter is is thirteen, and I keep thinking at some point she's got to watch the, the her dad's favourite film. Her. You'll scare her from going in the sea. Well, she doesn't like going. She doesn't like going in the sea anyway. It's a bit of a nervous Nelly when we went on holiday this year. Sure. Well, oh, there's a little tiny fish. There's a fish oh, around me. Oh, God. oh, oh. So yeah, hold my beer, says George. Here we go. I've got something for you. Right. Anyway, back to the film. So, well, let's start. So what do we like about I think we said already, we like the fact it's in two acts. First bit in Australia, second bit. Dom, you said you preferred the first bit. Mm. I, yeah, so, so yeah. to segue, segue on from the thing, um, which I know you won't hear from Amanda, but that's set in Antarctica. And they totally wasted that setting. Uh, they you know, barely featured it. It was kind of incidental, but Australia, the outback and the remote part they're in is, is a really integral part of the first half of this film. Beautifully shot, loads of Lovely photography, kind of brought the place to life. It's like a basically a forty-five minute advert for the Australia Tourism Board, really. I think, um, and yeah, so so I, I thought it was gave a real sense of place. Uh, I can imagine why in America, it really, and further afield, I'm sure the UK as well, it really resonated in this exotic land, which is similar but different to our own. And and I thought it introduced the characters really well. I mean, yes, it's a bit they're kind of slightly one notes, you know, macho, rugged, outback bloke. Kind of wise, cracking, sassy um, <clears throat> New, New York American journalist, um, but but I thought the, the I've already mentioned it. The chemistry, which obviously was reflected in their real life uh, romance as well, uh, mm. kind of carries it for, for right from the start. So I thought it's a strong start, and, um, and the, the two leads are kind of integral to its success. Mm. And it sets up. It, it, I mean. It, you know, it sets up well. She's in this small, small bar, which presumably that's the only place where anybody goes, because the next bar would be like hundreds of miles away or something like that. But yeah, this is their little community, and they're they're quite happy with it. The thing I thought that was odd 
was the, the other tourist that was in the bar. It was like, well, you know, oh, he's oh, it's a poacher, is he? Or, you know, and oh, he the was guy a... that was causing trouble. Go on. No, I'm saying, was he, uh, he gave tours, the other guy? No, I didn't, I didn't know what his function was. He looked like he was just with, you know, like he stopped off on the way somewhere. And I was like, well, you couldn't, you, you have to come here. You either live here or you come here for a specific purpose. Well, well, really, his only purpose in the film was to establish Crocodile Dundee's macho credentials, wasn't it? Because he starts gobbing off and uh, without breaking stride from his dance, he spins around and decks him. And, um, and that, mm. that's essentially the function that he performs in the film. There's there quite a bit of that, really, wasn't there? Just uh, characters and plots dro dropped in there just to allow him to demonstrate how uh, how much of a tough guy, <laughs> but with a heart of gold, he really, he really was. Well, especially with the Australians can really can like that though. Okay. Say that again, Amanda. Are Australians really like that though? Well, their cricket team isn't. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, the um, heart of gold isn't isn't a description you'd use for those. So, no, no, I guess uh, you know th this is a film to promote Australia in some ways, isn't it? And uh, Australian culture. So I suppose they show themselves at their best, or at least the central character. Mm. Yeah, I saw the Go on. We had Yahoo Serious. Yahoo Serious. Young Einstein himself. Yeah. That 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 didn't last long. No, that bombed in the United yeah. States. <laughs> yes. Um, I always thought Australians uh had a bit of spunk, as we say. Oh. Uh, and then I saw how um how they completely folded as a nation during the pandemic, where they just like rolled over and let, let the uh, the government tickle their belly so to speak i was like i thought australians had a bit of fight in them nah nah just yeah whatever you say whatever move, you do we'll just do move it away from the po politics yeah all right okay that's it that, that'll be that will be what i say um but no if you're looking at this film and then you're as dom says you're looking at it and going we need to go to australia we need to move to australia we need to go and visit it we need to go in and see this wonderful land because it just looks amazing um and yeah I, Job, job done. Um, I like the interaction between his Aboriginal mate, um, you know, and the fact that he went again. He's obviously got this relationship and everything with them. I forgot what he was said when he was asked the question: Should the Aborigines have their land back? I forgot what the answer was. I should know. No, it was more a case of um, a rhetorical question about owning the land, wasn't it? The land is them; it's part of them. Mm. Um, the but, fact that somebody lays claim to owning a rock. I, I thought um, when the Aboriginals were, Aborigines were in this film, it, it was interesting part because when I, when the Aboriginal guy first appeared, there was a bit of an uh oh moment. He really be treated pretty insensively, um, but he kind of inverts the the dynamic a little bit because she wants to take his photo, and he says no, no, you can't, and she jumps to the conclusion <laughs> that it's because it'll steal his spirit. But you know, as he points out, it's because she's got her lens cap on, and. And that's quite a funny line and was a good little scene. But it also, it, it can't be that Americans or, or non-Australians have no idea about Australia because that kind of inverts your expectations about what's going to happen. So I, wasn't, um, so I thought that was interesting. And, and maybe there must have been some expectations as to what sort of plot we were going to see. But in contrast to the transsexual at the bar, which I'm sure we'll get on to later on, but I thought this, yes. this part of the film was handled fairly sensitively. And, yeah. uh, and it was quite amusing, yeah. And you're okay with him wearing a kangaroo skin? Um, over his head while he while he shoots the uh, shoots the poachers. No, I mean that was ridiculous. That was just uh, stupid, isn't it? If the cast you might, if, if we were older, and we were starved of you know we wouldn't have been starved. We had plenty of comedy to, to at our you know our disposal. You know, Life of Brian on one side, you know, great sitcom and stuff like that. Morecambe and Wise, you're not starved of it, but that's the bit that my dad would howl laughter at. At something because he would just go that's that's the, the, one of the funniest things that he's seen the kangaroo part yeah he would just yeah just loved it all he loved the fact the kangaroo was firing back and they thought it was a kangaroo and uh yeah um you know i i thought like when i first saw the movie i thought he was a charlatan that he really wasn't oh. all that special because didn't he kind of like cheat at things like when well, he, he didn't like, have his leg bit. He didn't have his leg bitten off, which was part yeah, of that, the uh, the urban legend. That was over exaggerated. And also, when he looked at the sun to tell the time, didn't he look at a watch first? 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> he did do that. Yeah. But did you, did you not see him do his voodoo stuff with the water buffalo there, Joe? Well, That's... yeah. Then that can that confused me because I was like, well, what is it? You know, is he actually this guy or isn't he? You know. But no, I know when he did that, I was like, all right, well, something odd is going on here. And he did it to the dogs too. Oh, he did, didn't he? <laughs> but um, um, <clears throat> I, I tranqu- the, um, oh, go on, Charlie. No, I was going to say the buffalo was tranquilized. That's how the buffalo managed to not attack anybody because it was pretty much just standing there on, on its feet, not, not being able to do anything. That's how they got the effect. I do think that they said at the end, no, no animals were harmed during the film. Mm. All right, okay. Maybe giving the the uh, buffalo triple the dose, maybe. So, I don't know. so Amanda, I was, I was curious about uh, your your perception as part of the film because this is really like setting the scene, introducing the characters, and those two kind of, if not falling in love, then at least getting the hots for one another, and particularly her falling for him. So, did you find it believable? Did you think you know there's a lot of lingering glances over the campfire, and then when he protects those cam- kangaroos, there's kind of you know a lot of eye contact and things going on there. What, what, what's your view of this romantic part of the film? A bit staged. I don't think it would, it would really happen, to be honest. No? It wouldn't happen. No, not in real life. It'd stink to high heaven, wouldn't he? He wouldn't use any deodorant or anything, and his fingernails would be all dirty. Who wants a man like that? Uh, clear, clearly she does, but, you know... No, she in, doesn't. You're having these experiences, near-death experiences... And and things, of course, they're going to be close together. Of course, they're being brought closer together. Yeah, oh, Jane. Honestly. Jane fell for Tarzan. Mm-hmm. Who? I Judah. can't believe it because th- I'm also of the opinion that it's really believable. I was quite touched. I think I've got a bit soppy recently, but that that romantic plot. Yeah, I I'm with you, best, Dom. One of the best romantic plots in, in one of the films we've seen for a long time on this on this podcast. I found it really believable, and uh, well, I'm just yeah. surprised. I'm just surprised they didn't nail her in the. In the outback, I was going to say Nailer in the bush, but that would be uh, wrong, wouldn't it? Does, does, does Nailer in the outback sound any better? I'm not sure. Right, who had who had uh, <laughs> 62 minutes when the the bush gag was made? Right, that was Come accidental. But perhaps we can edit it so it sounded deliberate. But yeah, she would have definitely have. Um, they would have definitely done it in the outback. I think, in a manner of speaking. I wonder if he's still married. Because he said he was married, and then he went for a walkabout, and he's gone for two years, and then when he went back, she wasn't there. Oh, well, so you given, think that he that, did, given that he uh, didn't know what his birthday was, I think they're probably a bit, you know, informal marriages and things. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure if they were legally binding. Joe says so a free man. Yeah, uh, so he, he might have been free from all that red tape and entrapment. Yeah. He might have been married by <laughs> Aborigines. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There's no way that's like a Church of England official, you know, take it to the bank wedding, is it? If you're married by Aborigines under the stars. I mean, no, <laughs> no, not to be culturally insensitive or anything, but uh, you're going to get laughed out of court with that, aren't you, really? Well, didn't Mick Jagger and, um, oh, what's her name? Blonde haired woman. <laughs> I Who's... can't think of her. Oh, uh, <clears throat> Jerry Hall. Jerry Hall. They got yeah. married, didn't they? But it was actually not a legal ceremony. Yeah, they weren't right. technically married. It's like the ultimate know. prenup, yeah. Harry <laughs> Megan, Harry and Megan got married before their actual wedding. Yeah, that's true. Is that true? No. Yeah. It's BS. She yeah, says they it's got true. Married. She says it's true, but yeah, I can imagine. Why is it that all this talk of marriage? I've just got Peter Cook from the uh, Princess Bride. Marriage. Nope. Okay, yeah. just me then. Right. Let's, not dwell, it, let's not dwell on not this jet. <clears throat> I was <laughs> right. talking about the, um, the romantic subplot in the outback. Uh, but... Yes. Amanda's poo pooed that, so yeah. <laughs> Anything okay. else in Australia before we move to to New York, uh, where Joe gets misty eyed and starts telling us how uh, how it really was like that? I know we've touched on it, but we're not going to mention that scene where she's filling up her canteen from the water's edge anymore, because that was well, quite a powerful scene. Uh, yeah, a bit stupid, really bit stupid. ludicrous. And why why would she need to take a skirt off just to fill her canteen up? For the lads, um, eh? And was it, was lads. he being was he being protective or was he being voyeuristic? Uh, and and both. why on earth was she wearing such a <laughs> bong induced swimsuit when in the outback? 
You're saying big pants would have been the order of the day. You want some comfy pants <laughs> in the outback, surely. Uh, I, I can't remember getting it on trivia, but I, th- I, I think I remember that a lot of the budget went on that crocodile. I think it was like 300000 for the crocodile alone. Wow. Yeah. It that was a big co- crocodile. Co- it's convincing enough, though. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't. It was as bad as the jaw shark. Uh, oh, wait. Whoa, whoa. Sorry. Where, where are we going with this? What? The, 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 the fact that you think that the shark is rubbery, and it is. Of course, <laughs> it's made by that. It's, but it's like, it's like that Chinese it's... restaurant joke, isn't it? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you still jump. You still jump at the bits when it happens. So it's believable enough. What's to do with the quality of the, the equipment? Well, if it looked like a puppet shark, you would go, why is this film supposed to be so good? But it doesn't. It looks as convincing as they could do in 1975. I, I think it's really touching how after the crocodile attack has been thwarted and she's like a, a shaking mess on the river bank, he comes along and he gives her a massive hug and comforts her because uh, in real life she'd definitely have shat herself if that had happened. And uh, you know, I think <laughs> the, the fact that he just goes in there and holds her close is testament to his uh, his masculinity. You think they ate the crocodile afterwards? I think well, I think you'd have to. <laughs> but why do they stay there? If that's what if that's a place where crocodiles like to come and leap leap up and get people, then oh. there's presumably another one on the way. And, and how the hell could they swim later after that in open water? Um, there's no way she would have done that. No. Yeah. Anyway, he comes back to New York, obviously, because she's written the story. She's writing the story. Uh Joe, how realistic? Uh, did they did they try and make the, the New York of uh of the 80s late 80s i'd say i'd say very realistic there are yeah. definitely there are places that i recognize for sure um yeah i i definitely felt when i especially when i was watching it that it felt like manhattan so they did a good job with that you like the bit i mean i do obviously i like the bits where he's he's um you know as we saw in the trailer you know hopefully i'll see you around later because he's got this idea of like everyone in one place. Well, I'll I'll, I'll see everyone. Um, I did. I you know I I think the fish out of water thing is done really well. Um, yeah. Uh, and you know he doesn't. It, it could be quite easily milked. It'd be quite easily just you know. But he does it with such a charm that he's not trying to be. Oh, I don't know what that means. So here's a comedy situation. I don't know what that means. However. As Dom alluded to earlier, we do have, we do. There are people that have problems with this film, especially when it gets to the second half. Um, and so we've got the the uh, drinking competition with the Italian uh, cab driver, which turns into a bar scene where he's absolutely fine. I mean, I can't believe that he's not a little bit drunk. But yeah, so we come up with the um, the test for the transsexual. Should we call it that? I mean, should, oh. we call, should we call it to that? You can't say that. <clears throat> them, them. Where have what? we gone? Oh, I've, got, I've got a contact lens issue. So oh, right. Okay. Okay. You okay. You okay now? So yeah. Back. The trans- the eye I, thing. I'm back for the. I'm back for the transsexual chat, which I'm sure is going to be sensitively <laughs> and delicately handled and navigated. <laughs> so, uh, Joe, what do you think to that scene? <laughs> No, I thought it was funny at the time. I mean, that's kind of how we saw them. Can I use the word them? That's a, you know. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I'm I'm curbing my words that come out of my mouth. But, uh, I, you know, it's weird because I was thinking after seeing that movie, we didn't really see too many transsexuals back then. I mean, usually you knew where they were. They didn't kind of go to bars and try to blend in because they were going to get abused, you know, like they were, someone was going to either, you know, rag on them or basically bully them up or whatever. But yeah, I don't know what, you know, again, I guess times have changed where it's no longer a hidden fetish. It's more like something that you see every day now, but yeah, we didn't see too many of them back then. That's Mm -hmm. all I, that's, my G rating 
of what I have to say. Oh no, actually, <laughs> I have a I have a question. So yeah, so I got the whole thing with with that Sheila. What about the one that was at the party? What was the deal? Well, was that, that would be kind of like so. Where have you gone, Joe? Yeah, where's your video gone? Oh, my video's gone. I'm sorry. That, that was a that was a man in drag uh, at the party, as opposed to a transsexual. So yeah, no, it, wasn't. Hand over to, it, it, it was, was a woman. No, it was. It was a woman. It was a deep voiced woman. Well, that's that's that what that I was. No, I was think a man. It was a man in They're drag. both men. They're both yeah, men. That English, no. the English well, accented we, person. Yeah, we were man. supposed to believe that that was a woman, though, at the party. It was no, a woman. It wasn't. Yes. Yes. No, because he obviously does the test. Yeah, and they said, well, and he got it just wrong. forgive him. He's Australian. He's all, well, I don't think I need to go and visit. The voice is low. Of course it's, of course it's a man. It, it's that... voiced women. But it, it, the joke doesn't make sense because it should be like a rich woman, like an aristotic woman. And he goes up to her. And she looks kind of masculine, and then he kind of feels for some. And it's not nothing there, yeah. And right, there's nothing Dom, there, but Dom, she liked it though because he yeah, felt. Yeah, she her. did. Because no, he did a lot. He. Oh, right, can we Dom, just differentiate the character? I think was a woman in the film, um, but the person physically acting was it was a man. Is it, that's correct? Right. Yeah. Right. Oh. I'm going to find out what Wikipedia says. Yeah, I was going to look at that too, right. but. It definitely looked like oh, a man to me, it? but it's just it's like. But even when I was watching it the first time, the I was like. The joke wouldn't work if it was a guy. Yeah, because then it would have been too repetitive, too. The joke works because it's a woman, but looks like a guy. No, I agree with Amanda, but I still think it was a guy. It just didn't make any sense. Mm. Mm. Uh, it was. Well. I've, the multitude of times that I've seen it, I've always thought it's a guy, and the fact that he's just grabbed grabbed his balls means that he's like, well, that's why I need to go and visit Australia. I, I no. am, I am. You're not, you're not you're not still talking about the bar scene, are you? No, no, we've moved on to the okay, high yeah, society. Just, just making the sure. Party. Okay. All yeah. right. So so all right. So well, again, this is hard to tell. I the the actor's name is Anne Francine. Well, but we don't know if, it, so. yeah, she oh, don't know, might be, have yeah. or he might have changed her name. Yeah, they might have changed the name. Just covering all the bases. No, I think I think Amanda's right. I think she's uh, yeah correct on this one. No, so. no, no, no. It, it's definitely a man. Not a man. It's a low voice. It's a low voice. It's, it's he's not got a, it's... a man. Right. Okay. But, Meanwhile, Google's algorithm goes, I'm not quite sure what to make of this conversation. They seem to be doing the right thing. They seem to be just having a good natured chat about it. And meanwhile, the adjudicator is listening to this. I'm sorry, adjudicator has gone, no, cancel. So it doesn't matter so what we do now. I'm looking at IMDb and it says her long and successful career began in nightclubs. So I'm starting to think that's a nice way of saying that she started off in drag shows. You know, I, I do think it was a man, but I just, I don't think it works. Anyway, right. Anyway. We get bogged down. Joe, I know you went on some of the websites to see what people thought about this film. Do you want to to, to refresh? I mean, I can certainly read out. Oh, they were... well, well, yeah, I'm not sure you should because I've seen those messages, and uh, you know that's oh. just. I mean, uh, I like a controversial aspect to our show, but that's just purposefully. Um... Well, go on. Let, let's no, okay, things. okay, no, no, we won't go. We won't go. That's fine. I don't mind. No, they were um, appalled, but but a lot of like younger people nowadays are appalled at things like, you know, they can't uh, imagine watching Gone with the Wind or just most movies that we grew up in and, and loved. Yeah. They just think it's either too violent or it's too racist or it's not diverse enough or, or whatever. So a lot of people had problems with this movie of how they treated a transgender person but they also said it was racist and what's the racist part in this is it that he asked him what tribe was he in yes from? that was it but then but then look at what he said he's just like man i ain't got no tribe or anything like that great done the or maybe joke, it was the pimp the jokes, the jokes landed no because the pimp was white well the mugger was black though wasn't he you know the uh the famous you think you call that a knife this is a knife the, the yeah. mugger was well, black, how's that racist 
Well, I thought no, that was a bold about... choice uh, to, to have a black bugger, really. You wouldn't do that <laughs> if you shoot, reshoot the film now, would you? No. no. You make a 50 year old white guy, yeah. And he looked like Michael <laughs> Jackson for some reason. <laughs> he was dressed like him. So that, that I've never a, seen. That is a good line, though. I mean, come on, yeah. whoever wrote that line, that is a great line. As you say, it got milk dry in, you know, in different ways. But yeah, fine. It was a good line. But, but I meant the pimp that he sees in the bar when he says oh uh, it's a, what's happening yeah, yeah what's happening you know I, well, isn't I think that, that just a nice exchange what's, what's racist about that i don't know i think he may have been a pimp i would say if i would have seen him in a bar i would say he's a pimp yeah um i well maybe i don't know they again they find everything offensive it's like you know one glass smaller than the other it's offensive it needs to be banned you know i just and think that that's heads the way just pop are. off at blazing saddles or mash Oh, or something yeah. like that which should just explode um anyway or pretty much anything in the 70s and 80s and mid 90s well probably the 90s as well i'm surprised they haven't remade this with like a crocodile dundat where it's a woman crocodile margot dundat. robbie margot robbie yep yeah there you go and that would make a lot of money too unfortunately. i'm in <laughs> well it's like, saw- new, it's like the new south park um thing Put, Put a woman in it, make it gay. Make That's it lame. It. <laughs> yeah, don't make it lame. Um anyway, moving, moving on. Um I, I think that the so we talk a little bit about the love story. Again. Between them. No, because this time, obviously he proposes, he does that like stupid thing of like, you know, talking to a dad, getting a hand in marriage, and proposes at the table and does that. And she's moving, as he said she was a bit of a slut because she was moving from one guy to the other she was kissing him and in the same near enough the same scene she's kissing the other guy and it's going all over the place oh that's a bit harsh yeah, she's well a... it was wasn't it i mean if she if she she should have come back and gone your history i'm with this guy because he he can kill a crocodile with a dagger to the head right because you really need that in la uh i think i think it definitely wouldn't hurt to have that well, sort of florida. skill florida would be useful Right? Well, right, having yeah? somebody handy with a knife would be good, yeah. What, killing um, oh, you mean crocodile? I mean alligators, yeah. Um, yeah, they're they're fine. They're very tame where I am. Do you, do, you, think... do they come in your swim? I was going to say, do they come in your swimming pool? No, <laughs> I used they... to play. I used to play well. volleyball once, and one came onto the court. I mean, Ooh. right Ooh. right on the sand. Um, right. But it didn't do anything. It just kind of came out. There was like a little uh, ravine and it was big, you know, it had to be like maybe 10 feet long, yeah. just crawled out and everybody stopped playing volleyball and it just kind of looked at us and just went back. And they're on the you, golf courses. I've, I've played golf where I've seen alligators on the golf course. Do you, do you get them to train them to carry a ball in the mouth and take it all the way to the green? No, but there are some people that do train alligators. It's like just crazy. Mm. Anyway, um, it is it is that love story that I think makes the end bit. That's why I think works. You've already yeah, flogged but... the end. You've already poo pooed. You've all the three of you have already poo pooed the end bit. But I love the shot, uh, the tracking shot that just follows her. She takes the shoes off, and then t- the shot carries on. I think that's a great shot, personally. I don't think she should have been rich. That's my problem because it kind of shows a lot of her character that she fell for Richard to begin with because he's such a weasel. And it's not like he was a weasel just when he came back. He was probably always was a weasel. And for her to fall in love with him and then want to marry him. Now, if it was a poor girl, say she was a photographer or whatever, a reporter for a newspaper and they sent her out on some expedition in Australia to meet this crocodile Dundee, but she's engaged to a rich guy. You can kind of see the problem there. You know, there's part of her that's like, well, if I settle with this guy, you know, I'll be set for life. She is set for life because she's probably richer than him. Yeah. And uh, I, I just felt like, why, why would you be in love with this guy to begin with? Or even, even think about marrying him because he's just such a weasel. I think oh, that's a really good point. No, I think it's yeah. a good point, Joe. Yeah, but um, people make silly choices, don't they? And maybe it takes someone like a crocodile Dundee, some hero, to shake them out of that. So, but I think that's a good point. She would have been a more sympathetic, well-rounded character had she 
come from the school of hard knocks or had to fight a way up i'm sure mm. yeah um but you know dad was on the side so dad dad flip-flops as well because you see the dad congratulate them getting engaged and next time you see him he's holding the door well i hope you know what you're doing you know and so obviously she's raced she's gone from there and said dad i'm, I'm madly in love with crocodile and day and, and he's not stopped it so fair play to the dad everyone's everyone's got the blessing all she's got to do is go and find him in the subway i, I thought that was quite touching <clears throat> despite the fact that a wealthy family so it reduces the sympathy levels the, the dad was really supportive and uh, that was yeah. quite touching i thought yeah not like the dad in cocktail elizabeth shoes dad in cocktail Oof. mean but we will we'll get to cocktail maybe when we have a season called guilty pleasures first on the list cocktail um right well with any, any any more we've done the trivia we've we've wrapped this up this is this has been a great podcast because we've done all of the stuff in between we don't i i think i've had to retire the trivia time jingle because we because we're so expert weaving it in into the podcast and it's yeah it's great got- we have an ad oscar bands as well well, oh, we, did, we, not, we missed our opportunity there, didn't we? <clears throat> because oh, this did get nominated for Best Original Screenplay at the 1987 Oscars. I didn't lost, know that. Where it lost out to Woody Allen for Hannah and her sisters, which is... Well, of course enough. it That's that yeah. an incredible film, yeah. It is, it is. Um, right. I have a question, though. Is there a porn equivalent to this movie? I bet you there is. I bet you know what it's called. Can we come up with any names? I could come up with one. A Go on, porn Jay. movie? Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile. Oh, very good. Um, I did say that I'd leave you with the the story of the real Crocodile Dundee. So, just allow me for the next uh, couple of minutes just to uh, tell you the story of Rod Ansell because it is quite sad. Background music. In I there. probably would put some background music You're on this put one the, because uh, it's our pretty time music our, in. Our, our, our tune. Yeah, <laughs> our time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So uh, basically, Rod Ansell was, um, he, he'd had a, um, he, he was 23. He set out alone on a supposed fishing trip. Um, this, is, this is years before Crocodile Dundee. Um, and <clears throat> uh, he'd later admit that he was poaching crocodiles and he got stranded after the boat capsized in an isolated part of Australia. He told his girlfriend he'd gone for a few months um so when he when he became lost there was no one sound the alarm so alone he only had his two dogs a rifle a knife a roll of bedding and a few cans of food to survive on and he found himself isolated on a desert stretch of the river which fits morris river 120 miles from nearest human civilization he recalled hunting buffalo sometimes drinking their blood to stave off de- dehydration sleeping in trees at night to afford detection from lodge crocodiles and dingoes Emaciated but otherwise healthy, he was eventually rescued when he heard horse bells and found three Aboriginal ranchers and their cattle manager. <clears throat> Once he got back home, uh, uh, basically he kept it he um, kept it to himself, uh, fearing that he'd only upset his mother if he found out how close he'd come to death. So basically, this guy had had, had, had a story, but. It got out, as normally most things do. The local papers did see the story as a big deal and called in the modern-day Robinson Crusoe. Um, he basically had to re... He was film offers coming his way, reenacting the tale in a 1975 documentary to fight the wild. And he, But it was his appearance on British TV's uh, Parkinson show that um, suddenly birthed the idea for Crocodile Dundee. So... When he was when he was flying over, he didn't wear shoes and only he wore flip flops when he boarded the plane because the flight attendant said it's a requirement. He said, um, "I bet my bottom of my feet were a lot cleaner than the bottom of his, his shoes." I watch where I walk. He re- he told Parkinson that he uh, couldn't sleep on the bed. He slept on the floor of the hotel suite because he couldn't, and he was fascinated by the thing called a B day that was in the room, and this caught the ear of. Paul Hogan, who then worked on a, on a screenplay. But to cut this short, because you could go on about it, and I know I've already gone already, but um, 1986, Crocodile Dundee premiered. He, he, Rod, was living with his wife and his two sons. 
uh, on a remote piece of land nearly 10 miles from the nearest phone. So eventually the news got back to him and said, oh, th- your similarity between this and the movie. Anyway, uh, he thought he capitalised upon this, so he bought a little piece of land and started the tourism business and called it the home of the real-life Crocodile Dundee. Uh, because obviously Paul Hogan had nicked his story and, and used it to create all these millions. However, Paul Hogan's office disagreed, denied his letter asking for permission, and threatened legal action if he moved forward. So, um, basically, he took Paul Hogan to, to court over the issue, um, lost. Uh, meanwhile, at that time, uh, he was ordered by the federal government to slaughter 3,000 of his buffalo to curb an outbreak of tuberculosis. Um, he was forced to sell the cattle station and grow marijuana. He then got a cattle rustling and assault charge in the early 90s. His wife left him. Um, uh, he lost another battle over movie royalties because he tried again. Um, basically, he turned to drugs and in 1999, uh, the police stopped him uh, and he had a shootout and basically they shot him dead. God. So... I think the thing when I listened to so I listened to another podcast you know, about last year where they were discussing Crocodile Dundee and they went into this a lot further. Paul Hogan was a real shit about this because he made a shed load of money nicking mm. the story that he saw in Parkinson. And you're just like, mate, come on, man, just give the guy his dues. Even if it's just he made 353 million, you know, the studio, give him five or something, get him back on his feet. You know, let him have his little plot of land in the middle of God knows where that says the home of Crocodile Dundee. Why would you deny somebody that? It just, it just makes me really, um, not that I docked a point or anything like that of my final score, but I just thought that's a bit mean. No, I'm surprised he didn't win any case in court, but maybe it was tried in Australia and they were biased. Well, you know, maybe it was like, oh, we've got this the thing that's going to make us, you know, millions, billions, you know, in tourism and stuff like this. Well, why, why would this poor guy have affected things? They could have, they could have had a photo together, the two of them, got the two crocodile Dundees, and they could have done. No. Anyway, there we go. The story of Rod Ansel. Go and look it up. There's a lot more to that. And Ooh. poor lad. Um. So, scores, scores time. Shall I go first? Uh, yeah. I will watch this film again. I will watch this film again many times. And I, I dare say I'm going to go and watch uh, Crocodile Dundee 2, skip 3, and then watch the very excellent Mr. Dundee um, as well. And again. all that. So, yeah, I, not not anytime soon. But I think you'd like it, <laughs> Amanda. I think. Do you think she would, Joe? Do you reckon? No. I don't know. The acting is just so bad in that. It's movie. appalling, but it doesn't need to. What are you saying to... about me then? No, whether or not, you know, you think you'd like it or not. I don't know. Mm. I can't tell sometimes. So I'm going to give it a, uh, for me, misty-eyed, I'm going to give it an eight because I always knew it was going to eight. It's not a 10 out of 10 by any means. It's not, there's lots of flaws in it. But for what it is, for what it achieved, for what it did, for the cultural impact it had, I'm giving it an eight. Over to you, Amanda. It's a six for me. Okay. That's that's it. <laughs> that's that's okay. No, no context. Dom? So love the first half of the film. Love the shots of Australia. Personally found the romantic love story very compelling and engaging. Found the second half of the film a little bit more um, film by numbers. But better than average film, I'm giving it a six and a half. Mm. Okay. Joe, help me, Joe. You're my only hope. Yeah, I'm gonna give it an 8.5. I actually <laughs> liked it a lot. I, I think it's <laughs> Come the rewatchability on. of it. You can rewatch this movie yes. a lot of times, and I don't think we could do that with several of the movies that we've gone through in the past. So yes. Oh, come on, Joe. Wow. Joe I feel like I feel like giving you a hug over the uh, over the pond, as they say. Um, it's uh, this. Is that the first time that Joe's actually you've given a better score than me yeah that's As possible in, it might be wow ain't no half i'm getting oh, no, get... there's a legend <laughs> in, in, <laughs> in no way away. charlie in no way ripping off any other podcasts that we might all be fans of we ought to somebody ought to take one for the team go back and 
put in an Excel spreadsheet, the film, the scores, you know, what's the average, blah, blah, blah. Where, you know, and then we'd have those data points, wouldn't we? So also we would. Would go back through what is it, eight or nine seasons worth of films now. With all well, no, I think we only audience. started scoring them about three seasons ago, three, four seasons okay. ago. Oh, so it shouldn't take you too long then, yeah? So Yeah, 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 yeah. I've only got editing and all the other stuff to do, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I've got loads of time on my hands. Get AI to do it. Uh, is, that your, AI. Is, that your, is that your nickname for Amy, is it? Um, but, uh, so we're gonna... AI? <laughs> what did, wait a minute, let me just pick up. Oh, what, did, what, did, what did AI say about the thing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> there was... We've managed to squeeze in a rant at the end of the pod. Uh, were, you not, were you not gripped to Elon Musk's? Attendance at Bletchley Park this week, Charlie. Uh, yes, I Wish, did. I did spot that. Yeah. Wish you soon act simpering like a schoolboy. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's a drip, isn't he? He's a right, right drip. Yep. Yeah. Well, he's unelected, so yeah, like many oh, other okay. prime ministers before then. Um, anyway, we should, we should uh, Elon Musk. Charlie, oh. the politics corner jingle. Now we've now we've dropped trivia time and Oscar bands. No, no, politics no. Let's not do that. <laughs> yeah. but, All I say is listen to uh, the latest Elon Musk with Joe Rogan. It's pretty cool. Where Joe Rogan tries to introduce, not that this is the highlight, but I was listening to it on the plane on the way back, um, and it was Joe Rogan's favourite pizza is pineapple and anchovies. Ugh. Oh my god, that's and he, and he orders he gets he orders it because obviously Joe Rogan's podcast for three hours. He orders it and arrives, and he's been so excited about going. Yeah, just order it and I'll, I'll taste it. He doesn't even want to try it. Meanwhile, Joe's like chomping into it. Oh, this is the best pizza flavor ever, and I'm like, I need to try that flavor because I do. I love anchovies. But anyway, me too. Yeah, I think you got me into anchovies, Tom. Oh, they're so lovely. Yeah. Well, I like anchovies. I like pineapple. I've never had them together, but possibly yeah. I should. I think we should. think we should. Yeah. We should. When we meet up, mate, we should have have the makers one. Salty, fishy pineapple. Salty, sweet. What's not to like there, Andre? Eh? Bit like, bit like a romantic encounter in the outback, I suppose, would be a bit like that, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, do you want to? This should be the end of season seven, uh, which it is. But should be and is yeah. should be and is. But we do have a little extra before we do our Christmas movies, which we have decided upon. Um, I think we might have already mentioned them. They are a Christmas story and Scrooged. But we have time for one more film squeeze in the middle. And we've had a request from uh, your nephew, Joe. Uh, Frankie Collini. Ah, oh, Frankie. Frankie. We love Frankie. Okay. We do love Frankie. Yeah. Hey, Frankie, <laughs> do you remember me? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Never heard of that one. What's this What's sledge? What's this sledge? Well, I, I think it's not that bad, is it? I bet you Frankie knows it. I bet Frankie got teased with it when he was a kid or something. Never heard that at all. Sister Sledge? No. Sister Sledge, Frankie. It was like number one for like four weeks over here. No, that's I over there. That's over there. Listen, listen to the scorn in his voice on our on our musical heritage. You didn't have Frankie Goes Hollywood. You didn't have John Jerome or Spandau Ballet, but you did have Van Halen. So, yeah, okay. Um, anyway, what did Frankie say? What 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 was his request? Which we are yes. going to very very um, happy to uh, to grant. His one of his favorite movies from the eighties is The Princess Bride, and that is his request. Well, I've he not is, seen that. He's a very, um, very astute movie watcher then, because that is a great film. Which, sorry to uh, spoiler alert on what, what we might think, but uh, I think I remember Star Studded. I think is definitely the word for it. We've got Billy Crystal. We have uh, Peter Cook. Um, the Giants. Yeah. Um, oh, there's loads of people that pop up. Billy Crystal's great. But Peter Cook, as I tried to do that very poor impression in the middle of that, but yeah, Fred, Fred Savage. Fred Savage, Peter Falk. Is he the Wonder Years guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's only and, in it. Um, not, not in it for long. Well, who's the, who's the the main guy? Uh, Carrie Carrie El- Carrie Elways. Yeah, is it Elways? Yeah, and yeah. then Robin Robin Wright. Yeah, Harry Sean Penn. Yeah, oh. I, I have a feeling Amanda's gonna love it, but. Do you know what? I, I hope she doesn't. Do you know, before. I genuinely hope. I would, we're talking like you're not even here, sweetheart. But you know, <laughs> I, I, genu- I genuinely hope she does because. And I think you should invite Amy to watch it too. 
Oh, absolutely, yeah. Does, it's, uh, if I knew we were going to, whenever we were going to do the Princess Bride, which was at one point, and it turns out that it's now, <laughs> yes, absolutely, Amy, definitely. I nice. want her score. We'll have to like take the conversation offline for when we're going to do that. Then for the pod, uh, it's the next one. <laughs> yeah, but as in two weeks' time. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Okay, that works out. Okay, I think mostly. Anyway, right. So there we go. End of season seven. I've had a great time. Lucky Dip has really worked. I really um, like Lucky Dip. Lucky Dip. Again, we do Lucky Dip for season eight. What? But this time... With a twist. With a twist. It's a dip into the 90s. <gasps> oh my God. That means my, my background's not going to be appropriate. The Forgotten 80s movies. Oh, that's all right. you're thinking of. <laughs> Is that, that's your first first thing that she thinks about, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Personal life, oh, would God. you say? Background, yeah. Oh, well, we've got <laughs> some 90s anecdotes. We could update the story to shock and appall and engage our listeners. What did you have oh, to God. in the 1990s? Well, you were there for part of it, Charlie. Then we, we lived together, you know. We did. Then we got some, we got some, <laughs> yeah, we got some sexual relationship, life. yeah, for, uh, for a bit of the 90s. Um, fantastic. Uh, dip into the 90s. I get five films, you all get four. Same same thing. Um, if somebody else wants to do the editing, they can have the extra film. But oh, looks like okay. it's just me. Uh, cool. Right. right. So we'll have a we'll have an after show party. We'll have a wrap. We'll have a, I don't know, we'll get Are beers we? or something. Can, well, Are we all going over to Florida then? Oh, yeah. We, you don't want to come here at the moment, Joe. Oh, mind you, you do. I, I actually, as long as it's not raining, if it's cold outside and you've got an English pub with a fire, it's a good always pint of raining. landlord. A good pint of landlord. Yeah. I've spent, I've spent many a night recently doing exactly that. I'm very happy. So, yeah. yeah. No, we do have to wrap. I've got a not very well daughter to go and attend to right. as well in a sec. So. Oh. Okay, right. I'm going to say cheerio. See you. Good day or goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> what? <laughs> Total <Toodle> pip. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>